wanted to chat today about uh, central planning and uh, or even just planning and uh, a couple of ways that it can go about. And initially, people thought that, you know, maybe we ought to have a government who would plan ahead and pave the routes for us. And what I mean by that is a bunch of free individuals, one person would have a store and a bunch of other people would have houses on a particular area, in a particular area. The people in that area would want to get to the store. And so they would be on going on this trail and it would be getting worn down and muddy and, and you couldn't really get across it. And then everybody thought, hey, let's all toss some money together and then the government can build a road and then we can use that road. So the government said, OK, what is it you people, you independent, free, wonderful people are doing? You're going from there to there. This is the route you're taking. OK, we're going to pave it for you. That kind of planning could arguably be, if there was a way to, uh, to fund a government that wasn't uh, extortion, that wasn't violence, taking money from others against their will, if there was a way to do that, that you know, that kind of makes sense. Unfortunately, though, when we think of planning today, a planning department, your city planning, county planning, etc., and then the, the, the bigger government, the, the world government folks, UN and such, who are doing the, the district planning and the human settlement zones, where should they be and such. Uh, the, the whole nother, whole nother ball of wax here. But they are thinking, hey, we think that people should live over in this area and that there should be stores in this area. And so we are going to only allow people from now on to build here and only going to allow stores to be here. And we are planning the community. Oh, and because people are driving here, we don't want to have any bad smells from cow farms, so we're not going to let them be on the upwind side. They need to be out in the other area. And they're planning all of this out, and they're thinking, we are really smart. We're way smarter than all these stupid voters. Like, And they have a point that if somebody's going to vote and thinks it matters, that's not really showing that that, that, that person's very bright. But it's still up to us, whether we're smart or dumb, to choose where we want to live, what we want to buy, what we want to put there. And it's not up to a third party to come in thinking they're all smart and to try to do this central planning and saying, this is how you ought to live your lives. Well, why not? You might ask. You might say, people who, t- who go to get their degrees in planning and in urban planning and, and, and property development and all these different d- d- degrees, wouldn't they know a lot more than you know, silly old me. I'm just a dentist or a mechanic or a, uh, I don't know, a landscaper or whatever. I, I don't know this stuff. Shouldn't I rely on the experts to plan the whole area, all the little properties that everybody owns? Shouldn't I allow a third party to tell everybody how to live? I don't think so. And here's why. One reason why. Beyond the moral part, let's get to the mechanics of it, the pragmatic part. And that is that a bunch of human beings, all who have different desires, and fears, and passions, and things that they like and dislike, values. Some people value having a quiet place to sleep. Other people value being close to a train. Everybody has different values. And every single human being ought to be making all of these decisions themselves based on their own values. The planners come in and say, this little city of 10,000 or 100,000 or 10 million, we are going to know what is best for all of these people. And each of these people have thousands of different thoughts and desires and motivations of their own. But we can solve this complex problem better than all of the individuals can in the marketplace. If you let everybody do it just kind of on their own and figure it out and do such, that's called the free market. The government says, no, we are going to come in and make all of these big decisions. This is a, a, an issue of complexity, and complexity I like to describe uh, or to give it the analogy of a football. If I'm, if I'm looking down this road right over here, and if I throw a, a basketball, you can have a pretty decent idea roughly where it's going to land. Like, it'll be somewhere there. We know that. But if I grab a football and I throw it, and I don't throw it in that cool spiral thing, I throw it so it's end over end. Well, it could land on that little bump right there and then bounce that way or that way. Who knows where it's going to end up? A football is more like a, more like a complex problem, and a basketball is more like a, a simple problem. 
And, you know, a, a simple problem would be more like throwing the basketball in a parking lot in town um, where it's just completely flat and you throw it and you know pretty much right where it's going to go. But this area behind me here, there are all these bushes and nooks and crannies and, and hills and little bumps and stones. And you throw that football, we just don't know where it's going to go. And if you think about each of our lives as a football, and we can't even plan our own lives. I mean, how many of us at age 16 or 17 had everything mapped out? We're going to get married at this age to this person. Um, half of us are going to get divorced from them at this age. We're going to have 2.1 children and 3.2 dogs and a white picket fence. And we're going to have a car that breaks down on this day. And we don't have all that planned out. We just kind of go along doing the best we can. And that's the football bouncing all around. And for the government to think that they can come up here and throw 10,000 or 10 million footballs down the hill and figure out where they're all going to go and how they're all going to end up, that is lunacy, pure lunacy. That's what the planners think they can do. They just want to make it a little better for everybody. Bull honky. A really sad example of this kind of central planning is the United Nations, uh, their Agenda 2030, their goals, their Sustainable Development Goals. And each of them in and of themselves might sound pretty nifty, or at least of the 17 or 19 or whatever they have. Got them printed off here. I'll, I'll go through some of them. Um, many of them make good sense. Many of you know, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I like that. that. That sounds cool. The challenge is they can't do it. Now, there are people like uh, Bjorn Lomberg or something to that effect um, that he says, hey, I should be the central planner, or I have the better ideas than other people have because... I realize that there's going to be waste and corruption and a lot of the money that the UN spends is just completely wasted. I have a better way of doing it. But his philosophy remains the same. It's okay for the smartest people to centrally plan and manipulate the lives of everybody. I'm not sure I like that. Tucker Carlson, he has plans for people. This is how it should be. This is what we should do for immigration. This is what we should do. How do you really know that the things you think will make the world a better place, or at least your government's country, the things that you think will make it a better place, how do you know that it really will? You don't. You don't, and I don't. Nobody does. So the United Nations, their, their goals for sustainable development, um, no poverty is one of them. End poverty in all its forms everywhere. Doesn't that sound awesome? Get rid of all poverty? Uh, that sounds great. Now, there's always been poverty forever in every government in, in human history, but the plan is to get rid of it by 2030. So that's that's going to be the plan. Now, in order to achieve this and a lot of the other things, there have to be a lot of, uh, I don't know, kind of behind the scenes manipulative things happening that uh, you and I wouldn't understand, but they understand and they're able to pull those strings and make us make the right decisions, kind of nudging us so that it's better for all of us. Zero hunger. If they're going to end hunger, achieve food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. Good health and well-being is number three. Ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all uh, at all ages. Now, this is one of those things. Uh, here, here's what Bill Gates has talked about with the uh, vaccines. And here's how they, they're really smart, and they have social scientists and, and, and all these other kinds of scientists that, that look into things and say, okay, how, why do people make the decisions they make? How do things come to be? And so an example that Bill Gates has given, and it's he's been attacked for it. Uh, he, there are plenty of reasons to attack Bill Gates, but eh, let's, let's be intellectually honest about it. One of the reasons is he says, reduce population through vaccines. Yeah, absolutely. So this what he's talking about is the study that says that people who, when, when people think that their lives are going to be short and it's going to be, you know, low chance of their children surviving, they're going to have more children. And so in order to have fewer children, you have to have healthier lives. Bill Gates thinks vaccines are a way to do that. And he thinks, well, of all these poor people who are breeding like crazy, which he doesn't want, he wants to control the population size to what he knows is the perfect size. In order to do that, people are going to keep breeding crazy unless they know that there's a good chance that their one or two kids are going to live good long lives. Then they won't feel like they have to breed five or 10 or 20 of them or whatever. Uh, so that's, that's one of his plans. That's his social engineering is uh, he doesn't care if he saves Betty Sue with a vaccine. That's not so important. What's important is that the whole world sees 
that, oh, people are being saved by vaccines, they're living longer, I don't need to have as many kids. So that's just one manipulation. And then as we look down this whole list, I'm not going to go into detail with each of them, but quality education, making sure everybody has a good education. Well, that one kind of brings up the question, uh, providing a thing means somebody has to provide it. And who's going to pay for that? Well, well, the United Nations is. Well, the United Nations then is going to have to tax all of the member governments. And who are the governments going to get the money from? Central banks. Taxing people. Those are those kind of two methods of getting money. Um, so it's going to come down to you and me having stuff stolen from us because they know that things are going to be better in the long run if they steal the money from us and they spend it on having people be better educated. Because if they're better educated, as we know the Prussian schooling system does, if people are better educated, then they'll have better lives. And so in order to achieve that, eh, what is it? To, to make scrambled eggs, you have to break some yolks or something to that effect. Uh, it's sad. Gender equality. Um, so all genders will be equal. Um, and I'm not sure how they're going to get women to lift really, really heavy weights or get men to be more nurturing with children. Uh, but they're going to do that by 2030. And we have, what, six years left, seven years left? Yeah, I guess they're going to do it. They're good. These central planners think they can do all this ridiculous stuff. Clean water and sanitation. Don't you want that? I want that. I want every human being an animal. Heck, I want I want pretty little butterflies to have clean, safe water. It's lovely. It's a beautiful thing to think about. But do I do I have the ability? Does anybody have the ability to socially engineer all of this stuff? Of course not. Now, are they going to make some progress in some ways? Yeah, absolutely. But it's just not worth it. It's just not. It's not the way human beings should be living. I don't think that's my opinion. Uh, affordable and clean energy. Okay, so this is where we're going to get into building more bike paths, making parking spaces smaller, uh, having uh, people live in the big cities, have this urban planning thing where everybody lives together and they can walk downstairs and play volleyball for 38.2 minutes and then walk to the grocery where they eat organic ground up horse flies and they don't have to use any petro fuels. They're not going to be outside away from video cameras where the government can monitor them for any period of time. They're always going to be monitored. Anytime they take government transportation, the, the buses, the, the subway, whatever, they're going to be having that little card that they tap. Okay, now the government knows that Betty Sue is going from this place to that place, and they're going to monitor them. Now, of course, this is not a surveillance society. They're doing it all for people's good. No, they're not. Uh, no, they're not. I, I, I don't trust that they are. I... I, I have not been persuaded, so I shouldn't say they're not. I just haven't been persuaded that they are doing it for good reasons. Have you been persuaded of that? I don't think so. Industry, innovation, and infrastructure. They want to build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, this is just getting me. Uh, let's see. Sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. You think governments or United Nations have ever fostered innovation? No. I mean, maybe occasionally they have, but the, the majority of good innovation that comes about, it's greedy, capitalist, free market individuals saying, hey, I really think there ought to be this widget. Hey, I'm going to invent this widget. Huh, 10 million other people want it. And they're each paying me a buck. Yeah, now I have 10 million bucks. I know that's not how, uh, how the books work, but you get know what I'm saying. Uh, it's not going to be the government that does this. They want to reduce inequality, reduce income inequality uh, within and among countries. So everybody has the same low amount, not the ruling class. They'll still have a lot of big money, but everybody else just, you'll own nothing and be happy. That's, that's the big goal, I think. Uh, sustainable cities and communities. This is making them, uh, making cities and human settlements. Human settlements, I'm reading, this is this is from the United Nations webpage. Human settlements, inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. If you haven't looked into this, do so. This just, does this sound lovely? It ain't. Look into it more. Responsible consumption and production. Ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Now, it's not sustainable for me to go out and buy whatever I want and eat whatever I want and drink whatever I want and enjoy whatever I want. No, I think there needs to be a central planning authority who tells me that it's only sustainable for me to have meat once a week. And it is sustainable for me to eat a lot of broccoli mixed with ground up horse flies. 
that they're going to tell me this. Is this scary? Do you trust the United Nations? Do you trust them enough to make all these decisions, have these goals? They're making you pay for these goals to happen. These are. This is why central planning is not going to work. That it's just it can't work. It's it's going to work for some people, the people at the top of the UN and the World Economic Forum and the U.S. government and the 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 uh, I don't know all the governments that agree with them. The Canadian Justin Trudeau is going to do great. He'll do that'll work out really well for him. He'll get very wealthy. So will his friends. It'll work out really well for them, but it won't for the rest of us. Uh, climate action. This is about the. Uh, changing the weather, or at least they're using weather as the reason to say that there needs to be climate change. Weather and climate are very different things. Uh, learn more about that. That's probably worth digging into. Life below water. Conserve and sustainably use ocean, seas, and marine resources. Now, don't you think it would make sense not to d d uh, dump a bunch of crap out in the ocean and to not fish out whole areas and then dredge those areas and pull up all of the the rich, uh, I don't know, the, the the dirt under there and use it for gardening and then never more can any lobsters live in that area. Well, no, that doesn't sound, sound good to do something like that. So yeah, wouldn't we need them to come in and do this? They're coming in and planning how many lobsters now we can take out, how they're going to build up the infrastructure. Do you really trust that this, this benevolent, some outside group of central planners can do this? I, I don't trust them. Life on land, protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, manage forest sustainability, combat desertification, and halt and reverse land degradation, and halt biodiversity loss. Now, do you like some of those, maybe? Maybe all of them? Do you really want some other party to do this? I keep repeating myself. Peace and, and justice, strong institutions. In other words, let's make government really powerful. They're not saying that dispute resolution organizations, private, voluntary uh, organizations that achieve this goal, they're not going to be supported. Governments are going to be supported. Uh, supported. Uh, promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Be honky. I shouldn't use that kind of language. Bull honky. That's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Do you realize what they're trying to centrally plan your life to be? Partnerships to achieve the goal. Strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Hey, can I maybe rephrase this and say pressure uh, any independent countries, any any presidents who might have a little tinge of, of independence and want to be their own autonomous country, pressure them into joining up and also pursuing these goals. If you're interested in that, read the book by... Uh, uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Read that book. That's what that talks about. Um, this is central planning. It's just, uh, yeah, this is just an example of central planning is the United Nations Agenda 2030. Horrible. 